And this is video number three. This is video number three, which, by the way, is getting ironic that I'm, I make videos both for my sports nutrition class and my nutrition class on the vitamins, right? It, it mostly because the slides look slightly different because the text, uh, my, my, my nutrition class is an online text and my sports class actually has a text text. But in the future, this is it. I'm just going to make individual vitamin mini videos and then apply them to all my classes while I'm doing this is silly. So vitamin E is another fat soluble vitamin. It, it doesn't really have that many functions in the body. The number one use for vitamin E is an antioxidant. It protects your body against oxygen, like things like ozone, which you've sure you've heard of ozone, which is actually a, a it's a type of oxygen. And superoxide, which is a radical type of oxide, hydro, uh, hydroxyl radicals, which are the OH radicals that we find in things like um, in, in immune cells that help you kill things. So it protects your body against those. It, it gets into cell membranes. Vitamin E actually becomes a radical. So it takes the hit from something out there in nature, a chemical. It becomes a radical, but it's a more gentle radical. And the nice thing about, the, uh, about vitamin E is it's fat soluble. Vitamin C, which we'll cover in a little bit, is water-soluble. Water-soluble vitamin E can regenerate vitamin E. So you take in, did I say that right? Water-soluble vitamin C can regenerate vitamin E. So as most Americans take in a ton of vitamin C, probably more than we need, we are flushing our body with C to replenish and regenerate the E that we have in our body, right? And it kind of maintains this protection system against radicals. And that's, that's about as much chemistry as we need. Um, the, the RDA is a funny one for vitamin E. It's 15 milligrams a day. The vast majority of Americans don't consume it. Uh, my fitness pal, the free version, does not estimate your vitamin E intake. I, I wish we, we had a better free version. Uh, but the, the truth is, and I, I've known folks who've done vitamin E research, you probably don't need 15 milligrams a day. That is probably way more than you need. So if you're, if you're, you're probably getting enough. Now, if you weren't getting enough, you could have things like immune function issues. You could have nerve damage. That's an extreme outcome. I think for the vast majority of Americans, you may not be getting enough to be optimal, but you're probably getting enough if that wording is correct. Now, there is no toxicity of vitamin E in healthy people. We worry about vitamin E supplements. Typically, in folks run clotting medication, medication to limit your blood clotting. Elderly patients, folks who've had a heart attack, and the, and the reason is vitamin E can make those clotting drugs too strong. And so you could have things like bleeds or leakages in vascular tissue. It is, it is, I believe, the official statement of the American College of Cardiology to cardiologists, heart doctors, do not recommend patient, uh, we do not recommend you recommend vitamin E to your patients. And back in the 90s, vitamin E was all the rave. It is now not all the rave. You know, you don't need to take supplements. There's no evidence that, that they're protective. Uh, all of, um, I'm sorry, corn oil is a great source of vitamin E. Your, the, your liquid oils happen to be good sources because they often add vitamin E to protect the oil from oxidation inside your container, inside your cabinet. Almonds are a great source. Almonds are like the, one of the best nut sources. It's, it's almonds for vitamin E, walnuts for omega-3. There's your bumper sticker. And then you can go through there. You can even find some in things like asparagus and leafy greens. Um, and that's it for E. K... E has one specific job, K has one specific job, mostly, for, for clotting. It helps you make clotting proteins. It also helps with bone proteins, bone density proteins. But the big thing is for clotting. Uh, vitamin K can be made in the body from gut bacteria. So friendly bacteria can make biotin, which I don't cover, and vitamin K, which I am covering. Uh, babies are actually born with a sterile GI tract. They don't have gut bacteria yet. So they're typically given an oral dose of vitamin K at birth. It gets into their fat supplies and they can use it for the next, let's say, 90 days. Um, there is no toxicity of vitamin K if you take it as a supplement. You probably get enough in your, in your foods. Um, and I think the leafy greens are the big ones. If you've had a clotting issue where you had a blood clot, they can put you on medication to inhibit your clotting, anti-clotting medication. And often they will have you restrict intake of these foods. In extreme circumstances, I've heard of one student of mine many years ago who had a blood clot. She was very young. She was a runner. She was not only on an antibiotic to clean out her GI tract. They didn't want any, any K production 
uh, while she was going through therapy. Um, but she had a huge restriction of all these kinds of leafy greens to in 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 inhibit or limit rather any intake of vitamin K. So um, as long as you're, you're eating a kind of a varied diet of some of these things, I mean, you're way above your need. Uh, so as we transition into the water-soluble vitamins, uh, water-soluble vitamins, you typically can't get um, toxicity because you pee them out. Uh, they don't act as hormones like vitamin D and vitamin A. Those are hormones. Um, and they're, a lot of them are involved in energy production. They help enzymes in the body work, right? They, they don't do the cutting and the breaking. They help the protein molecules, the enzymes, do the cutting and the breaking. So if you were low in a certain vitamin, you could still do whatever that enzyme does, but you might do it at a lower ability. And that's kind of the idea of getting enough, making sure that all your processes in your body work at optimal. Now, that goes with if you take in tons of extra vitamins, your enzymes can only work as fast as your enzymes can only work. Having a full tank of gas does not make your car go faster than if you have a half a tank of gas. Actually, there's some weight issues there, I get that, but your engine's only gonna work as fast as your engine can work in your car. Having extra gas doesn't make it go faster. Same thing with vitamins and minerals. Getting enough really is getting enough, and then extra is just for insurance purposes, but in reality, you could just be peeing out very expensive water. And we're gonna end on that. 